<clears throat> Let me start with just asking you, uh, if you hear the word diabetes, what do you think of? Oh, something that you have to live with for the rest of your life. And illness that I know can cause complications. Um, something chronic, you know, and something that I wish I had never had. But you learn to live, you mm -hmm. know, you can live with it, mm -hmm. you know. Something that I never wanted, <laughs> but ended up with. Is that the sun in your eyes? No, huh? no, it's not. Is that reflecting on her glasses too? A little bit, but not like not like that other guy. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Um, so you have diabetes. I am. And how long have you had it now? This will be 15 years. Mm -hmm. Since '96. Do you take insulin? Or? No, I'm on just meds right now, just uh, pills. Okay. Mm -hmm. And how's it been going? I've had my ups and downs. Uh, when I was first told that I was a diabetic in 1996, I wasn't given enough information to really understand the disease. I was just told to stay off speech. And that's what I did. But every time I would go into the doctor, he would say, well, I've got to increase your medicine. And I wondered why, but he never did give me pamphlets, didn't send me to anybody. Mm -hmm. And uh, it got to the point where I just started increasing with meds, you know. And finally, I found somebody that put me on the right road. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, she got me where, because my A1C was just way out of whack. And uh, I had days where I can't even explain my, my highs and my lows and my irritations and frustrations and, you know, not being able to deal with things that, uh, especially teaching, I taught school. Mm. And there were days when I just wasn't myself. And I know I'm the type of person that's uh, considerate of others, kind, but there were days when I was just irritable and sort of hard to get along with, you know. But once I got my medication and started getting it in my system, you know, I found that uh, that changed a lot mm -hmm. of that, you know. And uh, so I was glad, you know, for that. Uh, finding the doctors to tell me and to send me to uh, a dietitian, mm. you know, who would work with me, sit down and, and we wrote out menus for me to go by and she just told me about my carbohydrates and everything and finally I got it kind of under control, you know. I'm not where I want to be mm -hmm. with it yet, you know, but I'm better than what it, what it was. Mm -hmm. So, so um, are you under control? Is your A1C good now? Well, I'll tell you what. For the last year, and I feel that my illness, I've had the flu, I've had bronchitis, uh, colds, probably from October all the way up until, oh, March mm -hmm. of this year. So it kind of kept it, it was pretty high. The last time I checked it, it was, I think 8.1, and that had come down some. It's n and I know I need to have at least six point something, you know, but uh, I've got another appointment the 15th of this month that I've got to go and uh, check it again. So I'm hoping that it'll be better. <laughs> now, do you have other people in your family that have diabetes, or? On my father's side. And my mother and my father had diabetes. Uh, my father had about three sisters who had complications from diabetes and died mm -hmm. with it, you know. So for some reason, I felt like later on down the road, uh, and you know, not really just thinking about it and not trying to prevent it, you know, just hoping that it wouldn't happen. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, but, but my mother and father both were diabetics. Now, um, 
What do you think the most important thing is for you to do to control your diabetes? Eating as healthy as I can, taking my meds, visiting the doctor. I go every three to four months. Mm -hmm. Exercise, which I don't do a lot of, but I know I need to, mm -hmm. and to lose weight, mm -hmm. and to try to stay as less stressful, you know, as possible. I think all it has a lot to do with, you know, controlling it. So you you got the pretty good picture of what you have to do. Yeah, right. I just need to do it. So what's? <laughs> t tell me about the challenges. What's the challenge? I think age has a lot to do with it. When I first found out that I had it, and when he, when he told me no sweets, it wasn't a problem. I didn't eat any sweets. Candy, mm -hmm. cake, pies, I just didn't do it. Uh, if he said exercise, I did it. Mm -hmm. But now, it's like I can't get myself to the point where I want to do it continuously. Mm -hmm. I may start, and I may do it for a month. And then I find myself back where I started from, mm -hmm. you know. And I think from what I've read that um, going to uh, classes on diabetes, family support, you know, other people, you know, trying to remind you and encourage you, mm -hmm. you know, that this is what you need to do. Mm -hmm. I think that would probably help a lot. So do you have a good support system? Not really. Not really. Uh, the dietitian that I went to in Starkville, she sends me information um, when they're going to meet. But usually my schedule is where I can't go, mm -hmm. you know, and it's always a time that's you know, where I, I'm either going somewhere because I'm a musician and uh, I stay busy. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not a couch potato. I don't just sit at home and not mm -hmm. do anything. But uh, I don't, and I live with, well, my children live with me, my youngest daughter and her young, so that's no support <laughs> because when it comes to eating, you know, it's like, uh, we're not, well, they're not. I am. I, I try to watch what I eat, but I'm not to the point where I need to be. I put it like that. Do you all have family meals where you actually sit you down? sit down every now and then. But it's not a regular It's not an everyday thing. It's not. It sure is. It's not like it was when my, when, I, when my children was growing up. We did. We took time, and we would sit around the table, you know, and sit down and eat, and just have family discussions and, you know, talk. But today is like one might go in this room, one go in that room and, you know, go to the den or go in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. What about when you were a child? We didn't, let me see, I put it like this. My father worked and my mother cooked breakfast. We didn't, we might have had a snack for lunch, but for dinner, we all, sat around the table and we waited for my father to come in from work at four o'clock and that's when we would all eat mm -hmm. and we did this on Sundays you know and uh, we did it at least once a day every day mm -hmm. sure did you have family reunion yes uh, we started um, a few years ago but then they stopped but since my mother and father passed uh, my sisters and brothers, we've started again, and we just had one recently. Sure did. Anybody talk about diabetes at the? No, we did not. You giving me a good idea to to do next time. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sure, are. I'm telling you. Okay. <laughs> sure did. <laughs> well, it's you know, uh, uh, diabetes is really a family disease. Mm -hmm. You know, we. We pass it on, and if someone has it in the family, we're more likely, and the things we do, we do together. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. That's right. What do you think could be done uh, to prevent diabetes? Well, um, to 
talking about it, as you said, with family members. Um, learning as much as you can, because I feel like if I had really thought about my father's sisters with diabetes, you know what I'm saying? Not that I didn't know, mm -hmm. but it wasn't talked about enough to make me think that, okay, this could be passed on, you know, to you. Mm -hmm. um, maybe programs, uh, having dietitians and nutritionists to come in, you know, and talk to you at your church or maybe at the schools mm -hmm. or just something in the community to to wake people up about what's but this thing is real. Do you think local? Yes. Do you think uh, local people like to hear things from experts, <laughs> health experts? <laughs> it probably depends on what it is, and it is telling us probably how to eat and how we should eat. We probably don't want to hear that. <laughs> I was going to say, would you come and hear me talk about that? <laughs> <laughs> we, we don't want to hear that. We really don't. <laughs> because we want to eat like we want to eat. Do you know what I'm saying? Sure, I do. And uh, it's like a way of life. I was brought up this way, you know, and uh, like my mother and father didn't talk about diabetes. You know, like I said, although we were told that his sister or sister died from it, but they never talked about it, mm -hmm. you know, and how it might affect us or mm -hmm. affect them. Mm -hmm. It wasn't brought up. Sure was. Do you talk to your grandkids about it? And you know what? I don't per se. They know that I'm a diabetic. Mm -hmm. But I think they hear more about it now from television, mm. from schools, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, they do know of it. Mm -hmm. It's not something that they, you know, haven't heard of it. Mm -hmm. But I will talk to them. I sure will. Because that's probably a good way to start. It sure is. Yeah. It sure is. Do you think there's that, you said you were a musician? Mm hmm What do you play? Piano. Do you? Mm hmm And so what's, uh, what do you play and what is it you do? I'm a musician for two churches. Okay. And I play uh, gospel. Okay. Um, so you're in church a lot then? Yes. Okay. So that leads me to, you know, one of the, things that I like to think about is how how do you solve a problem? You know, how do you how do we how do we prevent this from getting worse and how do we provide support? And uh, some folks have said that there's a lot of churches here in Louisville mm -hmm. and uh, um, and in Winston County. As you can see there two right here on That's one right. on this corner, one right, right across the street. From the uh -huh. So mm -hmm. what can um, what do you think churches could do? to make a difference in preventing diabetes or helping people that have the disease manage it better? Like I said before, I think bringing in people that, like dietitians, nutritionists, uh, I'm the announcer for my church. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I can get it over to the people about what's going on. And just, uh, my niece was telling me today, and I asked her, I said, what would you do? She said, you know what, ain't Mary? Uh, we need to walk. And she said, you know, that would be good if we could just get the, our church members out and we just walk, you know. I said, that's one thing I'm going to mention today. I said, that would be good because we don't do enough of it. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, we, we really need to have meetings, you know, where we can bring people in to let them know that this disease, it really, I mean, it, it can't be prevented. You know, if we know what to do, mm -hmm. and we know that, I mean, it could happen to any of us, you know, whether we're young or whether we're old, mm -hmm. and uh, that the information that we're given, you know, is to help us and to help us to live longer, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, I feel like maybe, just like I said, bringing in uh, the nurses, uh, my sister-in-law worked with the uh Oh, what was this? The home? Oh, gracious, gracious. Oh, can't think of it right now. But she would go to the schools and talk with the children, you know, about nutrition mm -hmm. and 
about the food groups and you know what they should and should not eat and all this stuff. So that could and she even did one at our church, a program at our church. So I think you know things like that would help mm -hmm. a lot. Uh, and even bringing the pastor, the pastor. I mean, you know, get involved by being the leader of the church. Mm -hmm. You know, that would help. You know, how do we get the pastors involved? <laughs> No more than tell him, I guess, because I look at my past and I wonder about him sometimes. Uh, uh, he is a very heavy set person, you know, and I wanted to ask him. I've noticed he sleeps a lot, you know, while I was uh, talking. I've noticed him kind of dozing, you know, all quite often, and I wonder, you know, whether he needs to have his sugar checked. Mm -hmm. So, uh, that would be something, you know, for him to bring, you know, for us to bring to him so that he could, you know, bring it to the, mm -hmm. to the, the church family. Mm -hmm. uh, Is that um, something that you would feel comfortable to do? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. okay. I know him real well, and uh, I, think, I think he's the type that would, would listen. Uh, I'd be very, I think he would do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So... Just to kind of end up here, what do you think is the most important thing people need to know about diabetes? Complications from diabetes, blindness. My oldest granddaughter's daddy went blind from diabetes. He's only 33. Mm -hmm. And he's blind in both eyes. Amputation, you know, and I had a stroke in 2002, and they said it came from diabetes. Mm -hmm. It affected my left eye. Um, it was just moving uncontrollably, just, and I, and I saw three of everything, everything, and, uh, but eventually it, it healed, by the grace of God, it healed, well, if I can say that, but I'll take it off, take it off too. but I, I, they sent me to a, a place in uh, Birmingham, Alabama, to this hospital, and uh, the doctor told me that uh, it happened in November 2002, and he said, by April, if, uh, if it has not corrected itself, he said, we'll have to do surgery. But by January, it had corrected itself. Mm -hmm. So I guess that should be enough for me to really want to just do better. <laughs> yeah. And I do have moments, you know, where I just feel that, uh, Oh, gracious, okay, I'm going to do better today. And today, maybe I will, and, but tomorrow, it may be another thing. I mean, yeah, I think sometimes we can allow uh, stress, you know, to cause us to eat more, mm -hmm. you know, just do things that you would normally, I mean, eat things that you would normally eat, so. But I, I'm still trying. I'm not going to give up. Because I want to live. I do. I want to live. And I do not want to have to die from complications. I don't want to have to, to leave this world from that, you know. But you keep carrying that book around with you now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That'll be a good reminder, won't yes, it? <laughs> it really will. It sure will. Now, you said you're, I have one question. Okay. You said you're a musician. Well, oh, you missed it. I already asked her. Plays oh. piano in the church. Oh, excellent. Yes. <laughs> oh, I was kind of hoping you'd break out into song. Oh, gracious, no. I, I bet you could do that, too. Oh, thank you. That's all right. We'll do it another time. <laughs> <laughs> Although I do sing, God has blessed my family with the gift of singing and playing. We have been really blessed. Sure have. Now, do you live right here in Louisville? Uh -huh. or? I live, well, we live out in the country. Oh, okay. Uh, about 15, 20 minutes away from here. Mm. The church here, or you go to church out? No. Out there. Out there, okay. But I play for one of the churches on 15, uh, going toward Knox of Hader. Okay. Uh, I, I, as a matter of fact, I've got to practice. I told you at 6 o'clock. Okay. I had to leave. We practice at 6. <laughs> <laughs> Very good.